In this video, we're going to do a short review of what we mean when we talk about biodiversity. This is a concept that most people understand, but it has several levels of complexity that are worth discussing briefly before we move on. We'll also talk a little bit about why biodiversity is so critical to both ecological function and to human society. The three objectives that we'll cover in this video will be to explain how the concept of biodiversity applies from small to large scales. By the end of the video, you should be able to describe how biodiversity influences some of the ways that biological systems work. And lastly, after watching this video, you should be able to provide examples of how biodiversity impacts human needs and human systems at multiple scales. These same topics are going to appear in other sections of this course, so this is just a quick overview before we go into some of those details later. The small scale of biodiversity is genetic diversity. Formally, genetic diversity is the variation of genes within a particular species, but sometimes when you hear people talk about genetic diversity, it's in the context of the total variation in genetic information on the planet. While that's not the correct formal definition of genetic diversity, it is an important concept to be aware of. At the species level, some species will have relatively or comparatively less variation in genetic diversity than others. This may not be completely intuitive, so let's talk through it a little bit. The first thing to understand is that individuals within a species are more similar to one another genetically than individuals of different species. My genetic makeup is more similar to yours than it is to a chimpanzee or a baboon. But my, my genetic makeup is also different from yours in ways that can be very significant. All species have some level of variation in genetic information across individuals, and this is really important because this is how adaptation and evolution occur, and it also provides the reservoir of information that helps species cope with different types of environments or pressures. So one place where this issue of limited genetic diversity is particularly important is in very small populations. This can happen when there are very few individuals of a species left in a population, um, for example, when a species is close to extinction. Too little variation in the genetic material of parents can lead to problems in the offspring. For example, certain diseases are more likely to occur when the parents are more genetically similar. More generally, the lack of diversity, um, genetic diversity, impacts how adaptation and evolution can proceed and can decrease the overall fitness of individuals within the population. Genetic diversity is important ecologically because this is what sets a framework for how species and ultimately ecosystems respond to external pressures. For human systems, genetic diversity can be critically important for drug discovery because so many drugs have origins in the natural world. And genetic diversity can influence how diseases emerge and can also explain subtle differences in crop species that can have large implications for food supply. Species diversity is measured as a number of different species present in a specific location as well as the relative proportion of species present. These are actually two formal definitions of species level diversity that are commonly used in biological studies. So we can imagine an example where there are two species present, like the lions on the left and the house cat on the right, and that would be one measure of diversity at the species level. You have two species. But you can also imagine a system where there are many species present, but in which maybe no single species dominates the ecosystem, versus another case where one species might be particularly dominant in a numerical sense. The picture at the bottom is of a mangrove ecosystem, which has one dominant type of vegetation, but an enormous amount of uh, marine biodiversity in the marine setting. So from an ecological perspective, species diversity is the level that controls or influences a wide range of ecological processes, which then can then influence or even determine how ecosystems respond to a variety of factors. In human systems, crop diversity is one of the key places where species really matter because different species of crops have different properties that allow them to grow in different conditions and which also determine their nutritional value to human populations and other sort of subtle um, important characteristics of crops. Some other examples include pollination, which is influenced by the species that are present in a setting, uh, ecological stability in the face of different disturbances like fire um, are influenced by the types of species that are there. And then species diversity also influences a variety of other characteristics of ecosystems, including how these systems regulate climate. And as we've talked about with genetic diversity, species diversity also plays a role in the discovery of new medicines that might benefit society. The highest level of diversity that we'll talk about here is ecosystem diversity. And this means variation in ecosystems across a landscape. You can probably imagine a large landscape stretching out as far as you can see made up entirely of grassland or forest. 
This type of homogeneous landscape would have less ecological diversity than, say, what you see in this photo, which includes grassland communities um, toward us, and then far out in the distance, there's high alpine tundra with forests in between. Ecological, the ecological relevance here is that this type of diversity plays a role in setting an upper limit on the types of species that might exist in an area. It also influences large-scale processes such as wildfire, which might move more quickly through a forest but stop, stop when you hit the high alpine areas. Um, from a human perspective, there are a variety of things affected by ecological diversity, including tourism, recreation, water provisioning, meaning how much water we can access and use, wildfires we mentioned, and things like flooding or other disturbances. To wrap up, it's important to recognize that the biodiversity concept applies to these different levels of genes, species, and ecosystems. At all levels, biodiversity plays a role in the function of biological systems, and many key biological or ecological processes depend on having at least a baseline level of diversity in the system. Lastly, it should be obvious that biodiversity is critical to human well-being. Although we haven't talked about it yet, you can probably see how it's easy to ignore or take biodiversity for granted. Many things that we need in society come from having diverse systems around us, and so there's a risk that we won't see the impacts of declining biodiversity until it's too late. In the next videos, we'll talk more about some of the steps that are being taken to preserve global biodiversity.